Good morning, family. Man, it's so good to be here with you all. It's been a minute. Our team has been out on campus the past few months working hard, like my dad was just talking about, and it's been, it's been a lot of fun for us, but it's a great to be here with you all here this morning. And uh, as we get started here, I just, I realize there's something I've never confessed to you all. And um, I just feel like I need to do that here today. And uh, I need to confess to you all that I can't, um, I can't dance. It's true. I've got no groove. And, and, and you'd think that over the, the span of things, like, I would have picked up a little something, Pastor Jim, because like, you know, here at our church, for a number of years, we had the Groovaloos, and, and they were like one of the top dance teams like in the nation and, and around the world, and, and they, were, they were here, and, and we had these, we'd have these groove nights and these dance nights at our church. And I got to tell you, I was there consistently, faithfully making coffee. I mean, you got to drink coffee. I mean, you know. I need the lattes. We had a coffee shop, so I was there. But I mean, I was always there. And you'd think I would have picked up a little something from that, but like, but like, no. And you might say, but John, you know, you're being a little hard on yourself. Like, it can't be that bad, dude. Like, whatever. So Joni Rapier, one of the, the founders of this dance group, she goes one day, she's like, hey, John, you're always, you're here, you're serving. She's like, how about, hey, I want you to come to my birthday party. We're going to have a whole bunch of dancing, all this different stuff. I want to invite you to come. And I'm like, oh, sweet, that'd be great. And then she like ends her text with, oh, and bring your dancing shoes. And I, and I text her back and I'm like, where, where can I get some of those? It's <laughs> pretty rough, huh? That's pretty rough. Okay, okay. So I mean, like, I might not have a group, might not be good at dancing. Might not have a groove there, but, but you know, there's some other areas in life where we can get in a groove, right? There's some other areas, you know, maybe like with our work, maybe like with our relationships, maybe like, like with um, our exercise. There's some different areas where we can kind of be like, okay, okay, I'm feeling pretty good. I got a groove here. It's, it's, it's going and it's feeling, I'm feeling pretty good about this. But I want to ask, and I've been thinking about this, what about, what about our inner life? What about our inner life? Can we get in a good groove there. Is that possible? And also, can we get out of groove there? For most of my life, I have felt that when pressure came and when there was a lot of pressure on the outside, there was an inner strength that would rise up to meet it. It's just, it's just been the way it's been for my life. There, there, pressure would come, hardship would come, challenges would come, and at the same time, there would be this strength, there would be this power that would rise up on the inside to meet that time and time again. And here, as that's been something that's been consistent and faithful, you come to expect it. You come to say, man, this, is, this must be what it's like living the Christian life, having that strength rise up on the inside. Until... This past November, as more hardship and challenge and different things came, that strength didn't rise up like it used to before. Something was different, and I found myself somewhat panicked, wondering, what's going on here? Why didn't that same kind of strength rise up like it did before? What had happened? I want to title our talk and our conversation here today, Getting your inner groove back. Getting your inner groove back. How many of you might say, hey, you know what? Spiritually, I, I feel like, yeah, I was, I was in a good place. I had this, this groove going between me and God. Things were good. And then maybe like me, you don't necessarily know why, but over the past year or two or whatever, all of a sudden it's like, man, where did my groove go? What happened? Things were good. What, what happened to that groove? Well, in Proverbs 4, 23, it says this. It says, watch over your heart with all diligence, for from it flow the springs of life. What does it mean to watch over your, your heart, the center of who you are with diligence? Like, okay, great, nice Bible verse. How do I do that? How do I watch over and guard my heart? As I've been pondering this and pondering how to assess the health of my inner life, I read this story. And it's a story of an officer that was aboard a U.S. nuclear submarine. And he was on duty in the Mediterranean, and there was all these ships passing overhead. It was very, very busy. 
on the surface. And the, the submarine was forced to make a whole bunch of violent maneuvers. And they don't use violent lightly when you're with a submarine. Violent maneuvers in order to avoid potential dangers or running into ships. And in the absence of the captain, this officer was in charge giving commands to position the sub at each moment. And because of the sudden and violent movements, the captain, who had been in his quarters, probably sleeping, appeared on the bridge asking, is everything all right around here? I mean, there's, there's probably stuff falling. There's all these violent maneuvers taking place. People maybe getting adjusted or thrown. And he asked, is everything all right? Yes, sir, was the officer's reply. The captain took a quick look around because things did not feel all right. But as he looked around, he assessed, and then he turned around, and he walked back towards the hatch. And as he was leaving, he could be heard saying, it looks all right to me too. Did you know that in your inner life, there is a bridge, there is a, a center place that you go to when things are being thrown or shaken or violently moved around? There is a place. And when you go there, what will you find? Because you can either find a state of chaos and panic, people who do not know what they should be doing, and therefore there's anxiety or fear. Or is it possible that you will find a calm and deliberate series of thoughts, actions, beliefs, convictions, and truths? Because that's what we should find as a Christian, at the center, at the bridge, at the heart of who we are. How do we assess that? How do we get there? For all my life, when dangers and fear abounded, I would go and I would check the bridge. I'd go and I'd check that center part of my soul, and there would be peace and calm. But like I said, this past November, it was different. As the pressures came, bad report after bad news after disappointment, I found there was panic instead. I just wanted to hide in my bed. I had lost my inner groove. It was not there. So what happened to me? What, how does that happen to us? Maybe if you were in the same boat at some point in time or right now. And can we get our inner groove back? Well, in Luke 3, we find a people, a whole people, that have lost their inner groove. Now that's rough. Maybe we can relate a little bit. But we find an entire people that have lost their inner groove. And so here, this is the situation where Jesus is coming on the scene. But before Jesus can get there, we have John the Baptist. And John the Baptist is one that was sent ahead of Jesus. Because the Jewish people have been expecting the Messiah for quite a long time. And yet, their conceptions of what the Messiah would be were a bit off. You see, they were expecting one that was going to come and exchange and, and, and affect the external of their life. He was someone who was going to change the outside. Here, the oppression. Look at the Romans. You're going to bring freedom for that. And you're going to bring a kingdom where we're going to be at the top and not at the bottom. And you're going to bring prosperity like we haven't seen since the time of Solomon. Like, this is what the Messiah is going to do for us. And yet, is that really what the Messiah was going to be all about? Because we read words like we're about to read in Luke, which is an echo of what we find in Isaiah 40, where it talks about the one that was going to come before Jesus. And we see here that Jesus was not coming to bring an external kingdom here on earth, was he? He was coming to bring a kingdom of the heart and soul, a kingdom on the inside for humanity. And here is what we see as we say that in Luke 3. It says that John was there preaching a baptism of repentance for forgiveness of sins. And then it goes to this, this, this word about him from Isaiah where it says, John was the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Prepare the way of the Lord. Make his paths straight. Or as we read another translation, clear the road for him. Every valley shall be filled, and every mountain and hill shall be made low, and the crooks shall become straight, and the rough places shall become level ways, and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. 
I think as we read that, I think it, it can relate a little bit to what we've been talking about all month. We've been having these amazing messages. It was kicked off by Pastor Dave. He was talking about, hey, you have an inner life. Much like Jesus and John came to do to like let people know, hey, there's something more you should be worried about, huh? And then there's, God desires there to be fruit there. Pastor Brett Ben leading us in this amazing time where he showed us that there's probably there been some house guests, some things that have gotten in our inner lives that should not be there, and leading us into this beautiful moment of repentance for that. And then last week, Pastor Amy leading us in this time of recognizing there's been some thoughts and inner dialogue, these things that have been so harmful and toxic for us. These mountains, these valleys, these things that either seemed too high or too deep that we could not overcome. We've been talking about this all month. And here, we can see that we can relate this passage directly to our inner life. This is what God's heart is, what he desires to do for us is to fill the valleys, make the mountains, the things that seem too big, too impossible, bring them low, make crooked places straight for us to be able to see that there is God here, that there is salvation for us in whatever difficulty and hardship and seeming impossibility we have on the inside, amen? We've been talking about this, have we not? But it leaves me asking, because as we've been talking about all these things, I've heard these amazing testimonies from students and many of you and small groups and whatnot saying, oh my goodness, God brought this moment of breakthrough for me. Or oh my goodness, I've been processing this all the wrong way. And oh my gosh, God, thank you so much. And I've heard that while I've also heard hours or days later, it's come back. Why did it come back? I thought, I thought, I, I, I believe what was said. Why didn't it come back? How do I get this thing permanent in my life? How do I do that? Because that's what I want. That's what I need. How do we make it stick? Well, let's go back and focus there a little bit on Luke 3, verse 4, where it says this, prepare the way of the Lord. That word prepare there is very specific in the Old Testament. That word prepare is the same kind of prepare that is used when a king was going to be going to a distant place. And what he would do is he has his whole entourage. He has gifts. He has all these supplies. He's got a whole lot of stuff he's bringing with him, fam. And when he's going to go, he would send people ahead of him to make the road ready. To clear it, to build roads if they have to, to do whatever is necessary so that as quickly as possible they could get from point A to point B with everything they needed. Prepare the way, the road. Prepare that road for the Lord. And then we see, make his paths straight. Make his paths straight. It seems like almost, almost redundant when you read it. Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. It seems redundant when you read that context. Until you look, and again, I don't, I don't, I'm not trying to bore you guys here, but you just got to look at this. You just got to look at this Hebrew. Just one, one word, okay? One, one word. One word. Okay. Paths. Look at this word for paths. Properly, it means a groove, a path formed by constant use. Figuratively, the route established by the Lord where people can best know him. A groove, path formed by constant use. The route established by God, by the Lord, where people can best know him. The first line, make the road. The second line, expect it to be used often. Expect it to be used often. Who's using this road? God. Who else is using this road? You and me. How often? So often that this road gets grooves formed in it. It's just so worn. And what's crazy, what's crazy is that we have a picture of a, of a Roman road. I mean, these roads have been around a long time, fam. 2,000 years. 
That's a road here today that you can see, Roman Road. They built things to last, not like L.A. They built it to last. And God, the picture that I see as I'm reading this is God saying, hey, I want you to build roads on the inner man. The roads inside of you that are like this, that last 2,000 years, that's how well they're built. And yet it, it doesn't matter. You can build it that well, and guess what? You and I are going to use this thing so much, we're going to wear grooves in it. People are going to see how often we have taken this route. That's the kind of imagery we get of what God desires to be doing on the inside of us. How often he desires, how consistently he desires our communion, our conversation, our relation to be. How amazing is that? Paths. So how do we apply this to our inner lives? You see, going back to how I was telling you, I, I found myself like I had lost my groove. And so I started asking, how did I lose this groove? What were the things that I had been doing and not even realizing it? You see, I've, been, I've grown up in this thing. I've been a Christian a long time. And I had established grooves with God and not even known how important they were or even sometimes what they were. And then over the past three years, what happened? Those grooves got all out of whack. I lost them. What were some of those things? For me, consistent weekly time in the Word. I had so many distractions. I was at home. I had a newborn for a year that wouldn't let me sleep. Four hours a night. I can throw all the, I can throw all the excuses out there, but at the end of the day, my consistent time with God, the regular time that my soul could count on, it wasn't there. What else? Another thing is that my wife and I had seen and tasted of the power of our church's Wednesday night prayer meetings. I'm not, I'm not saying this to boast. I'm saying it because we were desperate. We didn't miss one for seven years. And we experienced the fruit of that. And then what happened? We stopped going. And then it became an opportunity for us to come back and we still didn't go. Why? You weren't in the groove. A few other things, you know, that, that are challenges that maybe were like, even just like practically, like going to church every single week, right? In my family, we didn't miss church service. We didn't do that. It, was just, it just wasn't done. And here, that was a groove that had been there time and time again where I would come and God could deliver something to my soul. And yet another area where I wasn't in groove. Finally, another thing that I realized is after a few months of COVID, all of a sudden I, I realized, I'm like, man, I haven't talked to my friends in a while. Like had a real good, deep conversation, you know? And, and so I call, I call up one of my friends. I'm like, hey, what's happening? How come we're not doing this? And he goes, I think I got it. I'm like, what is it? He's like, you know, we used to always call each other on the way to work. And Every week, I, we'd be talking, there's a group of us, we'd be talking three, four, five times a week to our friends as we were driving to work for a half hour, 45 minutes, praying together, encouraging each other, letting us know it was kind of weighing on us. We weren't driving to work no more. And then we got out of the groove of that. You see, alone, maybe this wouldn't have changed too much. But together, all of a sudden, I found myself with the pressures coming in, panicked at the bridge, the inner parts of my soul. Because these grooves, these constant pathways and roads that were worn, that God was using to bring life to me, they were no longer there. And I needed to find them. So, you guys feel this is important? I think so. I want to ask this question. How now do we get our groove back? And I don't want this to turn into 
Something like, oh, John's trying to give me the five steps to inner soul peace. We're not going there. This is something that I think we find in this passage, we find in Scripture, some some processes that God has for us that are going to help us get back in our groove. And the first one is we need to prepare. We need to prepare. In this, in this way, as we saw in that context, clear the road. Create margin. I just told you there was these things that I had stopped doing, but it wasn't just that I stopped doing them. No, 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 no. I filled those grooves with other things. And now I'm comfortable. And I don't want to clear it. Most of those things, if we're being honest, aren't like super fun things I'm doing with other people. They're just things that I do like alone at the house. Not particularly healthy or useful, right? But they, were, they, they filled that space. I got to clear that away, fam. We have to make room there again. We have to create that margin so that we can actually get back into some of these things one step at a time that we need for our soul, that our soul is crying out for. If we are going to make all that we've heard this month stick and be permanent moving forward. So we have to prepare. We have to create margin. We have to clear the road. What is one thing right now that you filled some of those grooves with that you need to stop? Not make it a little less, maybe, but just like stop. Get it out of the way so that you can get back to doing what is good for our souls. Amen? Next, we need to prioritize. Prioritize. Mark 12 28 says this. I believe we have it up on the PowerPoint there. Mark 12, 28. There's some, little context, sorry. There's some, there's some folks that come roll up to Jesus. And they're like, Jesus, we don't know. We don't want you teaching what you're teaching. But we're going to ask you a tough question. What is the most important commandment? All right? What's the most important thing that we should be doing right now? And Jesus says this. He says, the most important one, answered Jesus, is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is, Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. That sounds like things that we do on the inside, isn't it? It's important for us on the inside to be doing these things. In our family, we call that putting Jesus first or Jesus comes first. The girls here say that every morning. Jesus comes first. And yet what's so crazy is that throughout all of COVID, my, my beautiful wife and I have been every morning waking up saying, family, girls, who comes first? Jesus comes first. Okay, cool. All right, let's pray. Let's do a little devotional. And we can be saying, Jesus comes first. And maybe in that moment, it's true. But what about the rest of the day? What about everything else that we're doing throughout the day? Is Jesus coming first? It's an issue of priority. Will we allow him to take that primary spot? Or when he wants to redirect us, when he wants to redirect us in that margin that we're going to create, when he wants to redirect us and talk to us or bring something to our soul, will we allow him to? Will we prioritize him? Jesus comes first. It's a choice. It's a choice to love him. A choice we have to make all day, every day. And finally, we have to realign. We have to realign. And this speaks of creating consistent ways. Remember that word for path. A path that us and God are going to use constantly. We're going to wear that bad boy out. And in, in return, it's going to give us such life on the inside. What's the promise we saw there at the end of, of Isaiah, at the end of Luke? That it's going to bring salvation for all flesh, for, all, for everyone, for the entirety of who we are, not just for a little bit, 
for every single part, for every single thing that you're saying, God, I need you here and here and here and here on the inside of me. God says, yes, I desire to deliver that and I want to walk this with you. But it's going to require a bit of realignment. See, I don't often think about the fact that my back is aligned. The only time I think about it is when it's not, right? Then it's like, you think about it all the time. <laughs> so you have no choice. Whoa, my back is not aligned right now. I need a chiropractor now, right? That's when we think about these things. But we need to look to God. We need to get consistent with him and know, okay, you know what? This has been out of alignment. This is an area that I need to bring back to center. This is an area that I need to maybe order, put into order, allow God to align in my life. I'm telling you right now, for me, and I think it's the same for you, we know what those things are. The Holy Spirit's been whispering it this whole time. It's felt out of alignment. It's felt, where is my groove? There's something out of groove and it's felt that way in our soul. And God's saying, yeah, let me work on this. Get consistent with me and watch me set things straight. Watch me do this. But again, it's like I told you, I don't want this to be five steps. I don't want this to be some kind of New Year's resolution for you. In James Clear Atomic Habits, he says, all big things come from small beginnings. The seed of every habit is a single tiny decision. I'm actually just asking you to do something really small here today. Can you make a decision to get consistent in one way that your soul desperately needs? Can you make a decision to get consistent in one way that your soul desperately needs. Craig Rochelle said this. He said, successful people do consistently what other people do occasionally. I want to rephrase that a little bit for us here this morning. People with a healthy inner life do consistently what other people do occasionally. I don't want this to be a news resolution, but I am trying to give you hope for health, for your inner life that's going to last you now and moving forward. Something that's going to allow you from this day forward to say, yes, not but I fell back because you're in the groove that you've made with God one tiny decision at a time. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this people. Lord, I thank you for this people that love you. I thank you for this people, many of whom I know, and those that I don't know, Lord, I thank you for them. And Lord, we pray here today. We ask of you here today, Lord, that you would give us the faith to make that one tiny decision for you. Lord, there might be some that would say, you know what, I've never even been in a groove with God Jonathan, like you, I, I got no groove when it comes to dancing and I've never had a groove when it comes to God. Lord, I thank you that there's good news. Lord, that you have gone to great lengths to send your son Jesus and sent those to prepare the way for our soul. Lord, if we'll just allow you, you'll come in and you'll make roads to every single bit and part of us on the inside. Lord, I thank you Lord, maybe for some, Lord, you're giving them a groove with you for the first time. They're going to be experiencing the fruit of that for the first time. And Lord, I am so overjoyed for them to walk in that. It's going to transform them. And Lord, any of those like me, Lord, that would say, God, I have been out of my groove on the inside. In fact, if you'd say, you know what, I've been out of my groove. Could you just raise your hand? You say, I have not been in my groove on the inside. God, I thank you, Lord, that you are realigning 
one tiny decision at a time for you, Lord, that you're going to help us to get back in that groove. Lord, that this is just the beginning. We thank you, Father, in your mighty name. Amen. We hope you enjoyed that video. We're always posting new content, so go ahead and click the subscribe button now to subscribe to Every Nation City Church channel. God bless you.